In this lesson, we're going to look at templated functions. Templated functions are really kind of different. Instead of giving a specific function, you're giving the compiler a template from which to build different versions of the very same function. Now, this sounds kind of similar to overloading functions, but it is different. With an overloaded function, you're writing multiple, multiple functions with the very same name, but different functionality. The, the different implementations of the same named function are really different. A templated function, you have exactly the same functionality, but it's going to work for different types of parameters. So, specifications on how these work. Number one, you cannot put templated code in a CPP file. It must be put in the file with the header. All the code goes in the header file. You don't prototype a templated function. Okay, so how does this work? You have two new keywords, template and type name. So just prior to the definition of a templated function, you include this line, template, and then in angle brackets, type name, T, and you can use the word class also. I prefer to use the word type name. It seems more intuitive to me, because what you're telling the compiler is, hey, compiler, the code to follow is a templated function, and the type name I'm going to use is T. That is, T is going to be the name of the parameter for the type that's going to instantiate this code. And then, of course, the code is the same, except, of course, instead of a specific type, you're going to have this identifier T. So what happens? Well, the compiler determines the type of the type to be instantiated, the type of the template parameter, when the function is called. And then it substitutes that into this code, copies it, builds a version of the function with that type, and then compiles it. So let's take a look at an example, T being the template uh, parameter, of course. Here's an example, our swap function. I'm going to template it, call the template parameter T, and I'm going to declare two ints, two floats, and two characters. And I'm going to call the swap function with the various types. So beginning with swap of A and B, I'm going to swap two integers. What happens? Well, the compiler will copy the code for the template function. It will instantiate the template parameter with the type int which means it's replaced t with int here, here, and here. So we've got a complete copy with the type instantiated, and then it compiles that. Then we can continue on with the compiling and, of course, the executing. Suppose we do it with two characters. Same thing happens. The template parameter is instantiated with character, and, of course, character is substituted in. That block of code is going to be copied and then compiled. Likewise with these two characters. Sorry, these are floats. So again, the template parameter is instantiated with float, float here, float there, float here, and we have multiple copies of the very same code. But it saved you time in coding. All right, one of the most important aspects of templated code is the documentation. It's really important that you communicate to whoever's going to use this code through a precondition that the operators used in the code must be defined for the type that's going to instantiate the template parameter. So in the case of this first example, whatever type U becomes, it must have the insertion operator defined for it. So this guy right here has to be defined. In the second example, it is the less than operator, which must be defined for the type. If that is not defined for the type that you're going to instantiate this function with, then it's simply not going to work. It's going to blow up on you. And of course, you can template on two types. And this is how you would do that. You would have template type name T, type name U. Incidentally, the convention is to name the template parameter, a letter near the end of the alphabet, and usually in uppercase. T is popular because it perhaps stands for template. But you will see template parameters named things like T 
type or T argument or generic. It's all a matter of personal preference and taste. Okay, so again, in this case, uh, the function repeater has two template parameters. We pass to it a const int. That's the number of times that the for loop is going to be executed. And then a const t and a const u. And this function is simply going to output t1 and u1 multiple times. And again, the insertion operator must be defined for the two types. So if we run this, where we have some character defined to be a character, and we initialize it with dollar sign and a float value as 2.2, and call repeater passing it for some character and a float, then the result's going to be four lines of dollar sign and 2.2. Okay, that is what templated code is all about. It comes in very handy, and in fact, some really wild and crazy things can be done with C++ using templates. You may take another course in the future and learn all about tricks using templates.